Why is speeding a threat to Toledo residents? You know, when you think about growing up in a neighborhood and all of the various, um, you know, all the various things that go along with that, it's not just, you know, owning a home and taking care of that home and having to rake your leaves and shovel your driveway. It's about getting to know your neighbors and, and, and going for after, you know, evening walks, especially in, in light of our last, you know, six months-ish with COVID and so many people being at home so often. I don't know about you, but I've seen so many more people walking through my neighborhood, walking their dog and taking bike rides and just getting much more active. And, you know, you're in Toledo, you're not going to do that. You're not going to take your dog for a walk on Monroe Street. You're not going to take your dog for a walk down Secor and Central, uh, probably. And so you're going to do that in your neighborhood. And when people driving cars um, cut through uh, from those main streets, cut through the neighborhood streets, and they drive really fast, it makes it more dangerous. And it may not even be people cutting through. It might be people who live in the neighborhood just trying to get home faster. Um, but the bottom line is it, it fundamentally deteriorates the quality of life in our neighborhoods. Uh, and, you know, those things add up. And, and when, when I hear parents say, I can't let my kids, uh, I can't let my kids ride their bike over to their friend's house a few blocks away because they're, they're nervous about the traffic. I, that shows me we have a really, really big problem. How can Toledoans easily report residential speeding? Yeah, so that's the big announcement. And, and sorry for not being kind of dressed professionally. I'm actually about to go hit the hit a neighborhood and start talking about Engage Toledo and promoting it. So um, the way that we uh, we just we're announcing, you know, really this weekend, we're announcing that uh, residents can report um, speeding issues. So it's not necessarily like taking a picture of them and catching the speeder in the act. It's just saying, you know, every day at 4.30, this, this intersection's really busy and someone keeps flying through. And that's actually what I hear. I, people call me as a district council member and they often tell me these stories. So people have the stories. We're just trying to collect them and engage Toledo. So you asked how, here's how you can do that. They can call 936-2020. So 419-936-2020. And the Engage Toledo uh, representative will actually take them through a few questions um, to get that information into the database. The other option is you can email engagetoledo at toledo.oh.gov. So there's phone, there's email. And the last one that I'm really excited about, and I'm going to be talking to neighbors about today, is the mobile app. So people can download the Engage Toledo app on their phone, and they can, they can upload the, the, the situation right there. Um, there's just three or four questions that take you through a couple of prompts and then you hit submit and then it's done. The information is where it needs to be. In our community, why is it important that we have safe neighborhoods? Well, a city can't, sir, a, a city cannot be successful without safe neighborhoods. I mean, uh, the bottom line is, you know, we can be all excited about, about, and we should be, we should be very excited about everything happening downtown and different renaissance happening in our city. Uh, you know, to go to a Mud Hens game is wonderful. To to go, I can't wait to go experience the new Glass City Metro Park uh, that's happening in the old Marina District. That's going to be really cool. But I don't know anyone who lives at Fifth Third Field. Not, there are not too many people who say, you know, I think I want to buy a house and I want to want to live in a in a at the Glass City Metro Park or I want to live on Summit Street. You know, I mean, you could actually there are a, a few you know new new apartment options down there, and 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 those types of things. But but people live in neighborhoods. That's my point. They live in neighborhoods. They shop near their neighborhood. You go to church. You go to the barber. Your favorite restaurants around the corner. People experience their life in their neighborhoods. And if people who, um, you know, in our region, when when thinking about where they want to live, if they can't find a neighborhood that they think is where they want to raise their family and where they want to sit down roots in our city then our city's gonna struggle because of that. It's fundamental to our success. What makes you think this new way of reporting speeding will work? Yeah, I think it'll work. And, and here's actually such a funny, uh, it's a great question and it's such a funny uh, answer actually. At our press conference where we announced it, one of the uh, city employees representative um, from Engage Toledo told me that before we even announced this was the way to report speeding, there were six people who have already done it. 
in like a day, just one day. So, so the reason I think it's going to work is because it already is. And it gets, you know, becoming more and more popular. I think as more people, you know, get a phone and, and they use mobile apps to, to do different things, I think they're more comfortable with that. So I, I think it's going to work, but I, it, these interviews and these conversations are important to get the information uh, out in front of people and do it, do it a lot. So they remember, instead of calling the non-emergency line, you know, we don't want to kind of uh, clog that line too much. Instead of calling 911, obviously you don't want to do that just because someone's flying through your neighborhood. Now, if someone flying through your neighborhood hits someone, then you call 911, of course. Uh, but, you know, we, we're just trying to get that information out there. And I think people use it and I think they'll continue to use it. What other things will be done to keep people safe in our community? Yeah, well, I can speak specifically to, you know, speeding in, in, in neighborhood settings. You know, the first thing we did was we, we stiffened up the fine a little bit. You know, I think when you think about driving through a school zone, um, you know, fundamentally, if I get, if I get a ticket in the school zone, it's going to cost me more. Well, why is that? Well, that's because we have a value of, of, of children being able to walk safely. Well, that's true in our neighborhoods too. So the first step was we stiffened up that fine. So now it's a double fine. Uh, structure if you get a if you get a speeding ticket on a residential street the next one is we got to put better tools for reporting in the hands of citizens that's what we're doing here with engage toledo going forward though i think i think there's a lot of really interesting and creative ideas on the table such as we need to do i think a, a really a full analysis of speed limits throughout our city are there certain streets where it's 35 but it really should be 25 you know, the difference between, and this is, a, this is a pretty morbid thought, but it's true, the difference between a pedestrian being struck by a vehicle traveling at 45 or 35 versus 25 or 15, that's the difference between life and death. And so um, analyzing speed limits throughout the city is a really important one. Also getting really creative. You know, when we go to resurface a street, um, are there things that we can do uh, to, to build in uh, some speed uh, speed control, you know, type, type measurements. And so I think there's a lot of, you know, future things that we're going to be, be looking at, but it's, it's one step at a time. It's a multifaceted uh, approach for sure. How can the community get involved in efforts to create and sustain safe neighborhoods? Yeah, well, first things first, download the Engage Toledo app, uh, you know, put, put a little sticky note on your fridge that shows the 936-2020 phone number, get used to emailing that, those, those issues in, you know, this is so important that when, when citizens of Toledo see these things happening in their neighborhood, then they are at the point, they're at the point of actually reporting it. And if we have more and more people reporting it, we have a better chance of addressing the problem. Toledo City Council member Sam Meldon, thanks for joining me. Thank you so much, Jaden.